Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد ذي القدر العظيم وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان وهدى إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وجعلنا اللهم من خيرة أمة سيدنا محمد عليه الصلاة أفضل التسليم الحمد لله الحمد لله It is a tremendous blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been given the means of seeking him in our lives, of been gifted with the tremendous gift of faith, of iman. And after the gift of iman, of having been granted the tremendous gift of hidayah, of guidance. And on the path of guidance, it's a tremendous gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us the ways of pursuing righteousness, salah, through seeking knowledge and being shown how to benefit from that knowledge so that we can go from being mere believers to striving to become righteous believers, to become virtuous believers. And with the grace and facilitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the striving and consistency and excellence to strive to become of the sabiqeen, of the foremost of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ The foremost, the very foremost of Allah's servants, they're the ones who have been drawn close, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah al waqiah And this is a tremendous opportunity. And this is what knowledge can facilitate. Knowledge shows things as they are. Knowledge shows things as they are. Which is why knowledge has been described in the Qur'an and in the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and in the wisdom of the inheritors of the Prophet ﷺ, the great scholars of Islam, as light. Al-ilmu nur. Because what is light? Light is that which shows you things as they are so that you can see reality as it truly is. And not, knowledge shows you things as they are so you see reality as it truly is. And higher levels of knowledge show you how to behold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his creation. Because you see, it is, it is knowledge that, okay, this is a case. Right? So to know things as they are. But higher levels of consciousness show you things as being a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True knowledge makes you really literate. True knowledge makes you really literate that you can see the reality of things, not merely the forms, that you don't just see the tree, but you see that this is something that can give fruit. But beyond that, you see that this is the creating of Allah and you gain an insight so you can see the great mercy of Allah, the great wisdom of Allah, the great marvel and majesty and beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creating and the beauty and majesty of the Creator Himself by seeing things as signs, signifying meanings of divine oneness. But of course, this requires striving. This requires striving. And that striving is the path of seeking guidance. Which is why, though we are on the straight path as believers, as people of Tawheed, as people of guidance, Yet we ask Allah, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And we keep asking and keep asking, 
because the levels of rising in knowledge and consciousness and turning and guidedness are without limit. But in order to seek that closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strive, we need to strive in the right way. Because not, not all those who strive attain. You must strive and you must strive soundly. Which is why we don't just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. We don't actually ask Allah, just guide us to the path to you. We ask, guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah, guide us to the straight path. But that straight path too is not just whatever path I find. سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those whom you have blessed before us. أَنْعَمْتَ Blessed is in the past tense. Right? It's fi'l madi. An'amta ali. Those whom you have blessed before us. And this is very significant. Why? Why is it significant? Because if we want to succeed in seeking guidance, seek guidance on the footsteps of those who have come before. If you want to seek knowledge, seek knowledge on the footsteps of those who have come before. Seek guidance on a trodden and clear path. And this is, and then seek guidance so that you can fulfill the meanings and potential of guidedness in your life. Because very often, especially in an individualistic age such as ours, we can focus simply on being guided ourselves. I want to pray and fast and do the right thing in my life, and that is enough. That is not bad, but it is not good. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that wal asr by time, inna al insana lafi khusr. Humans are indeed in loss. They lose out of their potential, of their capacity of standing before God, of attaining unto Allah's love and closeness. Man is indeed in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who believe and do righteous deeds. Is that enough? No. That's still falling short of the potential of guidedness. Until إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they call one another to steadfastness, to sabr. وَتَوَاصَوْا and who call one another to truth who call one another to truth and who call one another to steadfastness on that truth right? none of you believes until they wish for others of the good that they wish for themselves so the seeking of knowledge has to be not only for your personal benefit but you have to have that concern to be able to benefit others and this is particularly true if as we are now in a time when people lack guidance. They lack this, the, the means of guidance. People don't know about the straight path. They don't know about the Prophet ﷺ. They're out there in the shadows, desperately seeking light. So your seeking knowledge is not merely a cute lifestyle alternative. It is a, an imperative upon you as an individual, but is also an imperative upon you as someone seeking to be a true believer, seeking to be beloved by Allah, seeking to uphold the sunnah of the Messenger Seek it to benefit yourself and your standing with Allah, but that standing with Allah entails that you have concern for benefiting others. So what must you do? You must take the knowledge seriously. Seek it in the right way, with the right intention, with the right concern for the good of others. Assist in that process of seeking and spreading beneficial knowledge. So, what does that entail? Firstly, don't just sail, you know, don't just surf here and there on the path of knowledge. Have a clear sense of purpose and direction in your seeking knowledge. And that's one of the things that the Seeker's Steps curriculum strives to give, to give a clear path of seeking knowledge. So you can go step by step to be able to benefit yourself and to be able to benefit others. And we place a lot of emphasis and we have, alhamdulillah, a lot of resources and 
Sister Sarah Kuratnik um, will be sharing on the Seekers blog some of the resources within the, you know, um, soon after this seminar is over, we'll, if you go to the Seekers guidance page, you'll see resources on seeking knowledge that we have on Seekers guidance. And alhamdulillah, we have a lot of resources, right? Reflect on what is the path of seeking knowledge and pursue it with excellence. Set the intention to benefit yourself and to be able to benefit others, right? Whatever you study, study it with excellence. Right? Have that concern for the benefit of others and strive to serve, strive to serve, right? Because whether through seekers or through other ways, you know, these are efforts to spread that prophetic inheritance, which is the greatest responsibility of the ummah as a whole, is to preserve and uphold and transmit the gift of guidance that God blessed His Messenger with a gift to all of humanity. It's a trust that we must convey. Convey from me, even if it be one verse. So take your own studying seriously. Commit to a curriculum of study. Study Whatever you study, study it with excellence. Third, encourage others to be on this path of learning. Fourth, volunteer. Give some of your time to help transmit and spread the transmission of this knowledge. Support this effort with your time, with your supplication, with your assistance. And also gather with other believers of common concern in your communities to spread benefit. Because it is very important to come together on the ways of benefit as is very clear from Surah Al-Asr. Right? Man is indeed in loss except those illa ladina. It's not illa ladi. It's not except the one who believes and, and does righteous deed. Illa ladina, except those who believe. Right? Because they're a group. Their, their reality is defined not by individual identity, but by being a group that comes together on the basis of faith, righteous action, calling to truth, calling to steadfastness. So that Surah Al-Asr makes it clear that unless we come together as communities of believers with common concern, we're in a state of loss. And this is one of the aspects of the seeker's effort is we strive to bring believers together, not just virtually through our forums and live sessions, but also in your communities. Set up a seeker's circle. And inshallah, the, 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 if you go to the seeker's page, you'll see on the menu bar, circles. And the next circle is actually on seeking knowledge, walking the way of light. We're covering Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of knowledge, and to look at what the Prophet ﷺ taught about the way of knowledge and seeking knowledge and transmitting knowledge and giving life to human lives through the gift of guidance, bidnillahi ta'ala. So take these things seriously. So in sum, commit to a path of knowledge, such as the Seeker Steps curriculum. Whatever you study, study it with excellence. Uphold the adab of studying. Number three, serve. Right? Serve. Either by generally spreading awareness of these ways of benefiting. If there's anything of the good that you find out about, encourage other people about it. Whether it's the Seeker's Guidance courses, you're in England and the Virtues Tour is coming up. You're somewhere else and there's an excellent program at a local masjid. Encourage people to attend. Show up yourself, of course, as well. Give of, give of your time. Volunteer. Right? Give of your financial assistance. Consistent support of the projects that you believe in. Right? But also come together in your local communities on the basis of, your, of faith and righteousness, of seeking knowledge, of spiritual reawakening, of service to community and humanity. And and if one stays consistent on this path, this is the path to divine mercy. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, dunya mal'una, worldliness is accursed. It is distant from divine mercy. Except for remembering Allah and all that relates to it, right? Of devotion and acts of remembrance and seeking knowledge that reminds you of Allah. Wa illa aliman aw mutaliman, or except for a person teaching knowledge, the alim, or one seeking knowledge, 
These are the two great rivers of divine mercy and blessing, the means to bring life to our own lives and to gain the water by which we can quench the thirst of all seeking guidance wherever they may be and whoever they may be. So strive to be on that path for that is the path of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll close with a couple of questions that, that are there. There's actually quite a few. As you told us, knowledge is a means for guidance. Studying fiqh relating to women's or detail in fiqh, in which way is it mean for guidance for the seeker of knowledge? Knowledge, you know, beneficial knowledge that relates to your circumstances or where Allah has placed you. This is, firstly, you seek it. This is the command of Allah. Right? This is the command of Allah. So at that level, you seek it that you want to know the command of Allah. Right? We hear and we obey. Right? That which relates to your circumstances, you seek it with the intention of acting on what you know in order to seek closeness to Allah. And some things relate to your immediate action. Others, for example, you're in a place like, Alhamdulillah, in Canada we have a lot of water. We don't normally have to make tayammum. But there may be situations where in the future you may be, be needing to make tayammum. So you learn those so that when those situations arise, you'll know what to do. You don't travel much, but you learn the fit of traveling so that when you do travel, you'll be able to act on that guidance. Of course, you prioritize what you need immediately to be in a state of obedience with excellence in your life. But you seek that extra knowledge, the things that you know, we, uh, that, that we, we study in a practical way so that when situations arise, your, your brother or your sister is, is traveling and they say, oh, I wonder how do I pray on a plane? If you know, you can assist them. Right? And also you seek those details so that when you're ready, you're able to convey them to others with the conditions of sound conveying. And that's a very important responsibility in our times. We have so many youth and teenagers and those in university and young and old who don't have access to knowledge. We have to go out of our little circles of comfort and carry that prophetic message. Right? So these are some of the intentions. And one of the resources that will be posted is the intentions for seeking knowledge right? and one should renew and review them um, there's a question is it possible for a westerner to study knowledge fiqh especially in Syria and Jordan Syria right now is very difficult um, Jordan it is possible there's other places as well but, but the thing is one shouldn't sell oneself to um, wishful thinking right that if you a basic principle. I heard this from Imam Zaid when I got to Damascus, um, and I thought it was a bit hard. But you know, 16 years later, so almost 17 now, it is very true. Someone who does not study where they are as best they can will not be able to study when they go overseas. Someone who puts off studying where they are in the busyness of life. When they go overseas, quote unquote, to study, they'll they'll be busy and won't be able to study over there. That's just one it's because sunnah of Allah. If you don't if you don't accept the blessings that Allah blesses you with where you are, you will not find the secret of increase in your life. Right? So begin by studying where you are. Take it seriously. If you have local teachers, study with them. Supplement that with online study. If you don't have access to, to teachers locally, then begin studying online. Make a plan. Get, you know, establish a relationship with your teachers through consulting with them, to helping frame your study plans and so on. And then when you do go overseas, you will, one, will not be beginning with the basics and you'll have a level of maturity and understanding and adab of seeking knowledge. Right? Because adab is not an on and off switch. Adab is acquired. You'll know the skills and aptitudes that a seeker of knowledge needs. The question, when should a new Muslim start to learn the science of purification of the heart? Right after learning their creed and how to pray? Is it fardain to connect to a teacher for this? Um, it is obligatory to rid oneself of the blameworthy traits of the heart. Right? Um, 
we inc encourage that a person should approach the, the study of the religion in a balanced manner. It's not that you just sit and study your beliefs for a while and say, okay, then I'll learn how to pray. Because when the prayer time comes, you need to know how to pray. Okay? If someone starts talking to you, you need to desist from backbiting, lying, and slander, etc. So part of it is that the sunnah is that the basics of our religion are exceedingly simple. Someone can learn how to pray in a few minutes. Right? The, ba the bare minimum. You just go to someone, tell them, how do I make wudu? And I'll just show you right now. How long does it take to learn how to make wudu? It's cold water, so, you know, this is how long it takes to make wudu. I'm actually wearing socks, so I, I won't, you know, you take a handful of water and you wash your face. You take another little handful of water and you wash your arm, right? You take another, it's not even a handful of water, like you just, you know, and you dip your fingers in the water, wipe your head, you dip them again, you know, wipe your socks if you're wearing them. Of course, if you didn't have wudu before, you wash your feet. I'm not going to wash them over my uh, nephew's carpet. And that's it. It takes about 30 seconds to learn how to do wudu. Wash your face completely. Wash both arms completely. Wipe your head. Wash your feet. That's it. The prayer, stand next to someone who's praying. Say Allahu Akbar. Follow the motions. And in the various postures, say Allah, repeat Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, for example. And you know, pray the number of rakat, okay, the number of cycles of prayer. At the end, they say, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, and that's it. It's very simple. You can learn how to pray, make you know, the basic purification, the obligatory purification prayer in less than five minutes. The complete, like skeletal form, practically. Right? So someone who's a new Muslim, one of the important things is to connect them to scholars of the religion. Things aren't as difficult as many people make them out. You don't have to read big fat books to, be, to you to practice the basics. And you start. But with that, right from the beginning, we also have to nurture one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One needs to nurture, cultivate the sense of how you turn to God. Right? So that we, we learn with, with a balance between what we believe and how we practice and how we turn to God through our belief and practice. Right? So all of them are, are primarily obligatory. You, need, you have to know about God, but what do you need to know about Allah? That there's no God but God. That there's none free of need of any other whom all are in absolute need of except God. There's none possessed of absolute perfection who's, whom all are in complete indebtedness to except Allah. None worthy of worship and devotion and service absolutely except God. And that our reality is our neediness. And that need is only fulfilled through turning to God. Right? That's all. That's what you need to know. And the attributes and stuff of God are entailed by that. Right? So the basic creed and stuff is very, very simple. And we have classes for new Muslims. The absolute essentials classes cover those basics. And those then for give one a formative understanding. It's good to connect with community and with teachers for, for clarity. What are the various methods to serve the deen? The ways of good, the, the ulama tell us, as Imam Zarruq and others mention, are as many, as as limitless as the breaths of creation. Right? So they say your place is where Allah places you. And his pleasure is in turning to him as is pleasing to him given where he has placed you. So where whatever you're doing of the permissible or praiseworthy, whatever career you're in, whatever career you're pursuing, seek, have one intention in it, which is I want to seek the pleasure of Allah by benefiting Allah's creation through whatever I do and make choices in your life that are choices of benefit. What will promote benefit and good in this life and the next for myself and for those who I'm responsible for and others. And that's how we choose in our careers. When we're looking at where has Allah placed me and what should I do, consider Consider where is the greatest benefit? Because where wherever there is benefit, there is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what's beloved to Allah. Um, and of course, there's many high ways of serving, the highest ways of serving the deen, learning and teaching the religion, supporting that, but also fulfilling the greatest needs of human beings in 
in their worldly and spiritual lives. Another question, how do we internalize intellectual concepts of Tawheed? Tawheed is not intellectual concepts. These are realities that need to be alive in one's heart. So one learns and then one lives. And one reminds through remembrance. And one magnifies those reminders through reflection. Right? So one learns, one lives, one reminds through remembrance, and one magnifies through reflection. Right? That's how you know, Tawheed becomes a reality in one's life. How, many, how much room for Quran memorization should one commit to as part of our learning and studies? It depends on one's circumstances, right? If one, if one hasn't learned one's basics, one prioritizes learning one's basics. Um, if someone's very young and they've learned their basics, maybe they might devote themselves completely to, to learning Quran after learning what, their essential knowledge, something equivalent to, for example, the found step one of the Seeker Steps curriculum. But if one is older, and wants to devote oneself to one's studies, like you know, if you're, you know, past your teen years, for example, you've gone through university or in university and want to dedicate yourself to study. Generally, the ulama say that you should prioritize your seeking of knowledge, and you should have a sustainable routine of Quran memorization with it. But it depends on what situation um, one finds oneself in. How do you explain the concept of God to children? Um, take the Islamic parenting course. This is one of the things we discussed. There's a number of answers on Seeker's Guidance relating to it as well. Overall, um, firstly, you can't explain something that you don't know. right? So as a parent, one of the reasons one must learn the religion seriously is that you can't be serious about telling your child something that you don't, you don't really know. right? So you know, you, we gain a certain level of understanding and the best way of doing so is through study. And if one knows it, then one will be able to convey it. Basically, there's two things one instills in children, right? One is sense of the, the, the awe of the greatness of Allah. And children have an amazing sense of being amazed, right? And to appreciate that, the greatness and majesty of Allah. But in a way, that's awesome, right? Number two, to nurture in them the sense of the mercy and beauty and favor of Allah, right? Through which we're thankful, right? So the awe translates into respect and love and the sense of the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? and His mercy translates in our life into thankfulness. And if you have love and thankfulness, respect and reverence accompanied by that sense of intimacy with God, you know, your children's faith is on sound footing. And then we nurture, turning all the things that we inculcate in our children of, of proper manners and adab, we always instill the sense that this is for Allah, seeking Allah, nurture the meaning of love of Allah in their life. What are guidelines for food for seekers? Um, that's a that's a topic unto itself. The course on on the essentials of halal and haram cover the principles of halal and haram in our lives. Um, in, in, in general, a seeker who wants to be successful needs to uphold taqwa. There's no you know seeking without taqwa is like planting seeds in polluted soil, right? How do you purify the soil in which you try to nur you know, nurture and grow the seeds of faith, of guidance, of good, of knowledge, right? It is taqwa, right? it is taqwa. And taqwa manifest with respect to food is as the Prophet said, be mindful of Allah with respect to what you know. Act on what you know. What is the better thing to do? And how, what is the right way of doing that better thing? So uphold caution in accordance with the principles of knowledge. Right? So the, and a seeker upholds a higher standard in life. Right? But in accordance with knowledge sought from those who themselves live that knowledge. And the, that living that knowledge is facilitated by direct human contact with the scholars. So you observe how they live the knowledge. If you can't study with them on a weekly basis, in person in your community, then connect with them, seek their advice, appreciate the attitude they convey in the counsel they give, but also travel to them periodically, right? depending on your circumstances and where Allah has placed you. The final question that I will be taking before handing over, should a more 
simple existence be done more gradually? In general, there's general things that, that anyone, any committed Muslim would do. So do them. But anytime one wants to go beyond the, the general case, then consult. Like it's like medicine. You know, you have a headache, you take a Tylenol or an Advil or take whatever, you know, the, 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 you know, the green folk would suggest as alternative, you know, rub some peppermint or whatever on your forehead, whatever you might do. Um, you know, anyone, everyone does that, so do it. But anytime you want to do something that's outside the general norm, consult and consider consequences before you do it. Um, Many scholars are somewhat ascetic. I'm curious about the benefits of this. The Prophet ﷺ said, Is head fid dunya yuhibbuk Allah. Renounce worldliness and Allah will love you. Worldliness is, is that which distracts you from Allah. Right? So the, the practical simplicity is what is of benefit, seek it to the extent of the benefit. What is not of benefit, clearly, such that it promotes good in your worldly life or in your religious life, give it a miss. It's simple as that. Ask yourself, هَلْ yanfa? Does it benefit? If it does, seek it to the extent of the benefit, with consideration. That which doesn't benefit, the Prophet ﷺ said, from the excellence of a person's Islam, is leaving all that does not concern them. What doesn't concern you? Anything that is bereft of clear benefit or good in your worldly life or in your hereafter. Something in which you can't seek the pleasure of Allah, you just give it a miss. Right? And that's the key to contentment as well. Um, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of His most beloved of servants. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima wa baraka Allah ta'ala fikum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And just before I close, do. Um, do try to do your part in supporting our Ends of the Earth campaign. Alhamdulillah, um, it looks like this session will have even more students registered in the classes than previous terms. We get over 10 to 12,000 students per term. The students last session in 130 countries. So try to support this initiative if you can, as you can, and to encourage others to do so and encourage others also to, to take the, these classes um, because if you found benefit, I'm sure others will too. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.